The Renaissance Technologies Medallion Fund has reportedly returned 66% per year on average before fees for the period spanning 1988 to 2018. That is correct, 66% per year on average. Long-term consistent performance like this raises a lot of questions. Is the market really efficient? Do index funds still make sense? Or should you be trying to replicate the trading success of the Medallion Fund? To try to answer these questions, we need to start with Jim Simons. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of Common Sense Investing, I'm going to tell you, to the extent that I can, how Jim Simons solved the market and what his success means for you. Much of the information about Jim Simons and the Medallion Fund story in this video comes from Greg Zuckerman's 2019 book, The Man Who Solved the Market, which I highly recommend. If Jim Simons had never been famous as a hedge fund manager, he still would have been, and is, famous as a code breaker and a mathematician. Simons graduated from MIT with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics at the age of 20, completed his doctoral studies at MIT, and taught briefly at both MIT and Harvard. He went on to work as a code breaker for the Institute for Defense Analysis, where, similar to his academic career, he was able to make meaningful breakthroughs. Simons' contributions to mathematics cannot be understated. He was awarded the American Mathematical Society's Oswald Veblen Prize in Geometry at the age of 37 for his work, including the churn simons theory, which now has tens of thousands of citations in academic papers. Simons also spent time chairing the math department at SUNY Stony Brook, building it into one of the best math departments in the world. The time that Simons spent working with world-class cryptologists and building up a mathematics department did more than build his hard skills. Through his experiences, Simons became uniquely qualified to recruit, manage, and work with the smartest people on the planet. Throughout his time as a cryptologist and an academic, Simons maintained an interest in financial markets and trading. He dabbled a bit and even wrote a paper on the topic, but it wasn't until the age of 40 when Simons left academia to pursue trading full-time. At the onset, Simons recruited one of his old code-breaking colleagues to join him. The colleague, Leonard Baum, like Simons, had been credited with significant contributions to the field of mathematics. Baum had previously developed the Baum-Welch algorithm, which can be used to find the unknown parameters of a hidden Markov model. This is highly relevant to trading, because financial markets can be described as chains of hidden Markov models. Speech recognition patterns can be described in the same way. Initially, Baum and Simons developed some models, but also relied on intuition to trade. They had some success, but also some losses early on. Simons continued to attract some of the world's smartest mathematicians to his operation. But it wasn't until 1988 when his firm, by then called Renaissance Technologies, launched the Medallion Fund. Other than attracting some of the smartest mathematicians in the world, Renaissance had done something else that few other firms were doing at the time. They had created and cleaned massive sets of historical data to feed their models. Keep in mind that collecting data at that point in time meant recording the data stored in written records to build out data sets that could be fed into a computer. They were the first quant investors. Between their brilliant mathematicians and their data advantage, Medallion was able to build algorithms to identify patterns. Unlike traditional investing, they did not care why these patterns existed. They placed frequent short-term trades augmented by lots of leverage to try and profit from what their models deemed to be irregularities. Their models were so successful at generating winning trades that they eliminated any human intervention allowing trades that would make no sense at all to a human. They continued to tweak and develop the system, adding more brilliant mathematicians to do so. A big breakthrough came in the early 1990s, when Renaissance was able to attract two key people from IBM's speech recognition group. Remember, speech recognition and financial markets are similarly described as chains of hidden Markov models. The Medallion Fund had been doing well, but Robert Mercer and Peter Brown were the beginning of what has become the greatest investing track record in history. Mercer and Brown were able to develop a strategy to trade stocks, which Medallion had previously struggled with. Most of their success had come from trading futures. Robert Mercer explained that their trades only won 50.75% of the time, but that's all it takes when the fund is making millions of trades and employing leverage. When Mercer and Brown conquered stocks in 1995, the Medallion Fund took off. As a story, the success of the Medallion Fund is fascinating. The data seem to suggest that Simons and his team have been able to uncover profitable patterns consistently, which should not be possible in an efficient market. I can't tell you exactly how they have done this. Not many people can. 
the employees are sworn to legally binding secrecy. Bradford Cornell, a well-known financial economist at UCLA, wrote a paper in 2019 titled Medallion Fund, the Ultimate Counterexample, in an attempt to figure it out. He explains that $100 invested in Medallion in 1988 would be worth $398.7 million in 2018, and Medallion never had a negative return over that period. The fund maintained negative loadings to known risk factors, meaning that its success has not been driven by known risk premia. Cornell explains, in 40 plus years of reading hundreds of papers on investment anomalies, including some that benefited from data snooping and ex-post selection bias, I have never seen any performance approaching that reported by Medallion. Cornell even built a market timing model with perfect foresight, investing in stocks when their subsequent returns beat T-bills and buying T-bills when they did not. Using monthly returns, this perfect market timing model grew $100 into $331,288 from 1988 through 2018, still only amassing less than 10% of what a medallion investor would have earned over the same time period. One important thing to note is that our hypothetical medallion investor is as rare as medallion's performance itself. The fund has been closed to outside investors since 2003, so unless you were an employee of the fund, you would not have been able to partake in most of the gains. The fund also distributes its profits each year, capping the fund at $10 billion. This is to avoid one of the big issues that successful active managers can always run into. When a successful fund grows, it sows the seeds of its own destruction by having more capital than its strategies can handle. All right, let's think about what this means for you, the investor. The success of Medallion is without question a challenge to market efficiency. But remember, market efficiency is a model. It is not reality. Another way to think about this is that real-life markets cannot be perfectly efficient. This does not mean that you can beat the market. Let's take a moment to think this through. Any time that you make an active trade, you need to ask yourself who is on the other side. What do they know that you don't? In this specific and unique case of the Medallion Fund, they may have truly had better information due to better data and better data interpretation using sophisticated models developed by some of the world's smartest people. Even if they have figured out a persistent long-term advantage, nobody, other than their employees, can access it. There is a finite amount of these types of trades to go around. Medallion is arbitraging away what might be the last scraps of market inefficiency, and they're keeping the profits for doing so. None of this makes Renaissance invincible. There are other quant investors trying to crack the same code, competing with Medallion to mop up price irregularities. We always have to remember the paradox of skill. If two equally skilled investors are competing for alpha, the winner will be determined by luck. Medallion seems to have had the edge on skill, but your guess on how long that will persist, especially in light of the fund's recent mass publicity, is as good as mine. Unless I can get access to the Medallion Fund, I'll stick with my index funds. And even if I could get access, betting on their persistence would make me nervous. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Felix of PWL Capital, and this is Common Sense Investing. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone who you think could benefit from the information. And don't forget, if you've run out of Common Sense Investing videos to watch, you can tune into weekly episodes of the Rational Reminder podcast wherever you get your podcasts.